About four or five years ago, I became a huge fan of Arco Linux. Arco Linux, in my opinion, I think is one of the best desktop Linux distributions out there. It's certainly one of the best Arch-based Linux distributions out there. And it came to my attention recently that Arco Linux is now packaging a config file of mine and it's available in their repositories. You can install it via the Pac-Man package manager. That config that they're packaging is my Qtal config, which I'm kind of humbled, kind of flattered a little bit by that, that they think so highly of my Qtal config that it's now an option for you guys that are running Arco Linux. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a quick virtual machine of Arco Linux B, their Qtal edition, and then I'm going to install the Arco Linux dash Qtal dash distrotube dash git package and check out what they're doing with my config. So I created a virtual machine and I ran through a quick installation of Arco Linux B, the Qtal edition. And if you guys do this, if you install the Qtal edition of Arco Linux, make sure when you come to the login manager for the very first time, do not choose Qtal Wayland because Qtal does have an X11 version, which is what you probably want to choose. There is an experimental Wayland version of Qtal, but again, it's experimental, it's buggy, and unless you have a reason to be trying Qtal on Wayland, maybe you're a beta tester and you want to experience a lot of bugs and a lot of breakage, then maybe check out the Wayland version. But for 99.9% .9 of you guys, just choose Qtal in the list. This is the standard X11 version of Qtal. So let's go ahead and log in. And this is the standard Arco Linux Qtile desktop using their standard configs. We get our welcome application that automatically launches here. Let me go ahead and close that. Now, the first thing you should do if you run through a new installation of Arco Linux is after the installation, you probably want to update the system with a sudo pacman dash capital S lowercase y lowercase u. Now, in my case, I've already updated the system. So after updating the system, the next thing I would want to do is I want to go ahead and install my configs and again they make this easy because they already have it packaged as Arco Linux dash Qtile dash DistroTube let me tab complete and it will auto complete that so it's Arco Linux dash Qtile dash DistroTube dash git let's go ahead and install that and it's going to complain that the Arco Linux Qtile DistroTube dash git package is in conflict with the standard Arco Linux dash Qtile dash git package. So you can't have both on the system. Well, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and answer yes to this question to get rid of the standard Qtile package and install the DistroTube Qtile package. So, and that installs very quickly. And now that that is installed, if I CD over into slash Etsy slash skill, if I do a LS in the slash Etsy slash skill directory, nothing is there. And the reason nothing is there is because every file and folder in that directory is a hidden file. It's a dot file. They begin with a period. So the standard LS command does not show those. You need to make sure you use the A flag with LS. I'm going to do dash A dash L for all files, including the hidden files, and L for the long format of the ls command. And now we see everything that's actually listed in slash etsy slash scale. Now what slash etsy slash scale is on a Linux system, it is essentially a recreation of the home directory. So when you create users on Linux, whatever application it is you use to create a user, you create your own home user. And anytime you create a home user, you typically get a directory. You get standard folders like uh, documents and downloads and videos and music. And things. You, you get those you get this template file system created for you with default configs for the bash shell or whatever it happens to be. Well, how does a Linux system determine what files and directories to create for your user when you create a user? Well, it gets that from slash Etsy slash scale. This is essentially a skeleton home folder for new users. So the Qtal config is typically in your home folder slash dot config slash Qtal. So in slash Etsy slash scale, there is a config folder. So I'm going to CD into dot config slash Qtal here. Once again, I will do a ls dash a l and you can see there is config.py, that should be my config.py. And then we have colors.py, that's definitely a specific file for my config because I have my own colors file. It's basically a library that gets imported by my config.py that allows me to choose from between 10 different color schemes that I have available. And just in case you were confused as whether this is my config or not, there is a readme.org file here. So that is essentially uh, my readme.org is actually a literate config 
config written for Emacs. If I had Emacs installed, I don't believe Emacs is installed on the system. If I do it, where is Emacs? Uh, actually, Emacs is installed out of the box here. That is interesting. I wonder if Emacs was a dependency for the uh, Arco Linux dash distro to package because I did not install Emacs myself after the installation. So that's great that Emacs is already here. Now, what we need to do in order to use my configs, right? We need to copy all of these over from slash Etsy slash CL over into the home directory slash dot config slash Qtile. So we'll just do that right here at the command line because I'm gonna do copy. So CP space dash R, this is a recursive copy and I'm gonna copy dot slash asterisk dot slash is this directory asterisk means everything in this directory and we're going to copy it over to the home directory so i'll do tilde which is the alias for our home directory slash dot config slash qtile and now that i've done that let me go ahead and cd into the home directory now i'm going to cd into dot config slash qtile do it ls dash a l even though none of these files are hidden still i want the long form and now we have yeah my readme.org is here my config.py my colors.py are all here also there is a scripts directory let's cd into that ls and there is auto start.sh so that is the auto start file let me vim the auto start.sh and see if this is really my auto start file and yeah, they've changed quite a bit of stuff here, but it's for the most part, it's a standard auto start file. The one thing I will say is because I'm in a virtual machine, I do want to make sure that this virtual machine is always 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. So I'll do it. I'm going to add this line here, xrander-s 1920 by 1080. And this is for VMs only. You wouldn't have to do this on physical hardware, but I want to make sure that, you know, anytime I log into this machine, I get 1920 by 1080 for screen resolution. And now that I've copied over the files from Arco Linux-Qtile-DistroTube-Git over to the home directory, we should be able to just restart Qtile and get my version of Qtile, my Qtile desktop. What I'll do is I'm going to do a super X for exit, and this brings up the uh, lock screen, but you can use it to log out. So I'm going to log out of Qtile, and I'm just going to log right back in, and our configs that we moved over should be in effect, and we should see my Qtile config, and we do, although looks like there is a little bit of a problem here. Looks like there's a problem with the screen resolution, let me go to a new desktop and enter a terminal. Let me cd into dot config qtile scripts. And once again, vim the auto start dot sh file. Um, all of this looks good. Maybe I should have added an amper sign here at the end of that line for the xrander-s 1920 by 1080 command. I don't know if that's really a problem or not. But once again, let's log out and log back in and see if that minor change fixes the problem and it does okay so you know i leave all the mistakes on camera because i want you guys to see how i stay calm and you know just troubleshoot the problem right because i knew that the fact that the screen resolution was all wonky that me adding that line was probably the problem so it was it's, that was a very easy thing to fix right so no harm no foul there and this is actually my qtile desktop you get the bar at the top and this is exactly my bar all the same widgets the same colors uh, everything about my qtile config for the most part now i do know that they're using my Qtile config, but they stripped out a lot of the key bindings from my config because they want to keep the key bindings consistent for all of their different desktop versions. So they're still using uh, certain key bindings that I don't use. Super Enter does bring up a terminal, but I typically use Super Shift C to close. They're using uh, Super Q to quit, right? So Super Q to quit. And you, usually when you think quit, you think quit out of the window manager, but they're using it as a kill a, a closing a, a application that has focus. So that's what they're using. Super Q to close a window. Super X is exiting out of the window manager. If you want to run prompt, I believe they're using Super D for uh, Super D, I guess, for D menu, but it looks like they're using Rofi instead. But Super D is the run prompt. Now, since they have Emacs installed with this, I wonder if they left all my Emacs related key bindings. So I was using Super E E for Emacs. So Super E followed by E does not launch Emacs. So I think they removed the Emacs key bindings from the config as well. Let me go ahead and run Emacs. It says uh, Emacs command not found. Well, 
where is Emacs? Was it there? Ah, user share Emacs. So there is a directory, user share Emacs, but you can see there's no binary. So let's go ahead and do a sudo pacman dash capital S Emacs. So I thought that was kind of weird that Emacs would have been there out of the box. I was actually going to give uh, Arco Linux a lot of kudos for actually having Emacs out of the box, but I didn't read that correctly when I did the where is command. There's some libraries or something that's there, but Emacs, the binary, is not there, so it was not really installed. Now let me launch Emacs for the very first time. This is not going to be my version of Emacs, and it's going to be just a standard vanilla version of Emacs, which I'm not going to want to use. So honestly, we might as well kill that. What I'm going to need to do is I need to go grab my version of Emacs. So let me clear the screen here. And to grab my version of Emacs, it's available over at my .files repository on my GitLab. So what I could do is I could do a git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt1 is my GitLab. And specifically, I want to grab my uh, .files, if I can spell .files correctly. And there's a lot of stuff in that particular repository, so it may take a, a few seconds to download. OK, and now when I do a ls, you should see dot .files, a directory called dot .files, right? So now I'm going to cd into dot .files. Let's do a ls-al. And here are all my dot .files. Let me cd into dot .config ls again. And there is a folder called emacs, so let's cd into emacs. And uh, once again, let's do the long form listing. These are my Emacs configs. So what I need to do is I need to copy those over into the correct uh, config location. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make a directory. So mkdir make dir. And I'm going to make inside the home directory dot config slash Emacs. And now that I've done that, I'm going to do a copy so cp once again dash r for a recursive copy once again i'm going to do the dot slash for this directory asterisk for everything in this directory and where am i going to copy it i'm going to copy it into the home directory slash dot config slash emacs and now that i've done that now let me run emacs and it's still not going to run emacs using my config i think what i need to do let me kill all emacs just in case the emacs daemon is running that's weird that my Emacs config is not working, even though I copied my Emacs config over. Yeah, you know what the problem is? Let me open a terminal and zoom in. Let me do a ls-al here in the home directory and look for a hidden directory called .emacs.d. Yeah, that's the problem. That directory needs to be deleted. So that's the old way of storing Emacs config. So when you first install Emacs, like the base Emacs package, it creates this directory and a config file but I'm using a config file located in the .config folder slash emacs, and when both of these are present, it defaults to this one. So that directory has to go, or it's going to keep launching me into that plain vanilla GNU emacs, which obviously we don't want. So I'm going to rm-rf the .emacs.d directory, and now when I launch emacs, now it's actually running through the alpaca package manager inside emacs is going to try to install all of the various programs that are in my config uh, the text is really white you can barely see what's going on here but you see alpaca the package manager is running through an installation once it finishes this installation then i'll have my own version of emacs i'm going to pause the video for a second i'll be back in a, a few minutes uh, because there's probably a couple hundred emacs packages that have to be installed by this package manager for my Emacs to finally take shape. It is interesting that the colors are all wonky. I'm assuming that there's some errors here. So there's some warnings here. So there are a few packages that have not installed correctly. So once again, well, I wish I could read the text. Ah, I can't even read what I'm typing here. Let me kill Emacs and once again restart the daemon and see if it tries to install some more packages. Yeah, there's still a few packages that need to be installed. I mean, well, I, I'll play with this off camera, but it did actually install Emacs uh, as far as my config files and my key bindings are working. But for now, what I'm going to do, it's not important. Let me go ahead because the point of this video was Arco Linux 
packaging my Qtile config. And let's go ahead and just vim into the config.py. I was actually going to use Emacs to read the readme.org. Um, because if you're using Emacs, readme.org is actually the config file, not config.py, but I'll just do it the Vim way. So if you're a Vim user, you would actually use config.py. And I just wanted to check their key bindings. So I have a section in my key bindings specifically for Emacs related key bindings. And there it is. Super E followed by E launches the Emacs dashboard. So that one was working just fine. Here are the rest of the various Emacs related key bindings. They're also, they included all of my super P followed by P and you know, all of that. So these are our, all my DM script related key bindings. So for example, super P H would launch the DM hub, but it's not installed, but I can open a terminal and do a sudo pacman s uh, DM scripts. I don't know if they're actually packaging in that. Now I'd probably have to get it from the AUR. So Paru, dash capital S DM scripts dash get and it's going to install a bunch of dependencies because it's a very large package I'll decline taking that but if you install DM scripts then all of these key bindings should work for you make sure that you have D menu installed because by default it expects D menu to be there although you can use it with Rofi if you use it with Rofi you have to add a dash R flag behind every command, which is already here, which is good because the Rofi, I believe, is already installed on Arco Linux, so that makes sense. One last thing I want to point out is colors. So let me scroll down. There is a line here, colors equals colors dot doom one. So that's the default color scheme, but if I open a terminal and cd back into dot config slash qtile, do an ls, let's vim the colors dot pi. So this file here is simply me defining 10 different color schemes. You see Doom 1 is the first one, that's the default, but you've got Dracula, Grubbox, Monokai Pro, Nord, Oceanic, Next, Pill Night, Solarized Dark, Solarized Light, and Tomorrow Night. So you've got several different color schemes to choose from. And all you need to do is go in here, instead of colors equals colors.doom1, do colors equals colors dot whatever, you know, Dracula, for example. Let's go ahead and write that. And then let's do a restart of Qtile. And you can see the bar and the widgets are now using the Dracula color scheme. If I wanted to change it to something else, maybe Solarize. Well, make sure it's capitalized because I use capital S Solarized, capital L Light, Super Shift R to restart. And now we're using Solarized Light. So very cool. So really impressed, uh, really happy, again, kind of humbling, kind of flattering that the Arco Linux team, Eric Dubois and all those guys, you know, thought they, you know, should package my Qtile config. So I, I'm kind of proud, right? I, I feel very proud that, you know, somebody is taking that work. And that's one of the things about free and open source software is the fact that so many of us share things, borrow things from each other, because um, that's the point of free and open source software. There's very much a community aspect where you know you take a look at someone else's work and you take what works for you and you just throw away the rest now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode gabe james matt paul steve wes arcotic armor dragon commander angry george lee matthew methos nate erion paul peace arch and fedora realities for less red profit rolling soul astry tn ren tools devil reward into an ubuntu and willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at the Arco Linux dash Qtile dash DistroTube dash Get Package would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.